line up. Amen. So uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, when you meet me in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel, when we get to 1 Samuel, we'll make a right. Yes, and I did. Second Samuel. Second Samuel, chapter 24, starting with verse 18. Second Samuel, 24, starting with verse 18. And we're going 18 through 25. Second Samuel, 24, 18 through 25, New International Version. Second Samuel, 24, 18 through 25. And I did. Again, I'm saying I want to thank Brother Denby for coming around, putting his PA system together, Amen. working on the sound system for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Second Samuel 24, 18 through 25. When you get there, say, Amen. Amen. Here we go. On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. So David went up as the Lord had commanded through Gad. When Aruna looked up and saw the king and his men coming toward him, he went out and bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. Aruna said, Why is my lord the king Come to his servant to buy your threshing floor, David asked, so I can build an altar to the Lord Amen. that the plague on the people may be stopped. Amen. Aruna said to David, Let my lord the king take whatever pleases him and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offering, and here are threshing sledges also said to him, May the Lord your God accept you. But the king replied to Aruna, No, I insist on paying for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Amen. 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 David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord, then the Lord, then the Lord answered prayer in behalf of the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord Jesus, bless us this morning. Teach us this morning. Guide us this morning. Instruct us this morning. Learn us this morning. As my friend would say, let me learn you something. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 <laughs> that's my friend Deacon Wash, that's what he used to say, let me learn you something. So today, my subject is, how much should a sacrifice cost? How much should a sacrifice cost? Now, I would like to start my sermon by giving you some definitions and even some examples of sacrifice. The first one is, a sacrifice is the act of losing or surrendering something. Losing or surrendering something. The second one is personnel that are sacrificed, surrendered, or lost in order to gain an objective. Sometimes your company might have to sacrifice three workers over here, and three workers over here, and three workers over here to gain an objective, which is to keep the company open. That's a sacrifice. Then there is the act of killing an animal or a person in order to appease a deity. Y'all with me so far? Yes. 
The fourth one is to endure the loss of life. Stay with me. I'm going to ring your bell in a minute. Number five, make a sacrifice of something in religious rituals. Number six, a loss entailed by giving up or sell, selling something at less than its value. For example, sometimes we'll say, we're going to fast and pray over this project. That's a sacrifice. You used to eat three times a day. Today you're not eating but once a day. Or today you're not eating at all. That's a sacrifice. Turning down your plate. Giving up something. Something that, that impacts you is a sacrifice. Now I have four examples. One lady says, I gave two sons to the war. Two of her sons died in the war. That's a sacrifice. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's a sacrifice. Number two, the general had to sacrifice several soldiers to save the regiment. Number three, he had to sell his car at a considerable sacrifice. This brings home to me because when we moved from Philadelphia to Woodbury, I had this nice little sports car called a Carmen Gear Convertible. It was probably worth about $8,000 at the time. I sold it for $4,000 because it helped us to get into that house that we need. We really need. Remember that meeting? So to a friend of mine, fireman, Tommy Ford. And um, the sacrifice was I had to give up my toy, something that I enjoyed, to get to where the family needed to go. Mothers know this. Mothers know when I, when I say sacrifice. If, if you're a mother, put your hand up. You, you can teach me sacrifice. Y'all on another level with it. <laughs> Y'all on another level, men can't go. <laughs> We don't have the capacity to sacrifice like we, like we mothers, like mothers. Right. Mothers on, mothers way up here with it. And, and, it, and if it's a male child, mothers is up here with it. <laughs> example number four, my final example is, I'm going to change this. I did write down there. This is the truth. He gave his life for his children. I, that's what I wrote down there. I'm changing that right now. She gave her life for her children. Yeah. Yeah. I think I better hit something a little more realistic. <laughs> she gave her life for her children. There are times in our lives when God just simply wants us to sacrifice. Sometimes that sacrifice is physical, like he wants us to turn down certain foods or do certain things, exercise or whatever. Other times that sacrifice is mental. Remember the scripture that says, what sort of things are loving, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are good before? Talk about the thing on these things. That's mental. You actually have the capacity to mentally sacrifice. There's certain television programs that you might watch at home that has a lot of stuff going on in it that God doesn't really want in your spirit. So God might say to you, I want you to stop watching that particular program. You hear me here? Other times, God may, may want to challenge you or get you a mental sacrifice like taking a class or going to school. Still on other sacrifices and occasions, God may want you to make a spiritual Sacrifice, Like, he wants you to trust him for the solution of your problem. See, if you're like me, I, I, I consider myself a problem solver. I, I do pretty good with problems. Um, in my, uh, I was just telling my wife this morning, when I was in school, I took a class called Conflict Resolution. And I aced that class. I got an A in Conflict Resolution. And I think it's just my innate, it's just something God has given me where I, I, I kind of know how to solve problems. And, um, and, and people come to me to their, with their problems too. And, and I really enjoy helping people with their problems because 
Yeah, she's here. Um, <laughs> then the dumb guard. Sometimes people have problems, and they come and they, you know, they're wrecked, it's all over, it's all over. And, 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 and I got this real simple solution for you, you know, because God, you know, God, God, God anoints us to be able to, to do certain things. And I was just tickled about uh, my sister yesterday. She had a, she had a problem. And, and, and when, when I got finished with her, you, you all out there gonna laugh. You, you, you were laughing, don't be laughing, don't be laughing. And, and she, she went out there feeling lighter because her problem was lifted. Because what's a problem to her? Somebody else is sitting there with the solution. Amen. 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 Sometimes God wants your time. Sometimes he wants your talent. Sometimes he wants your treasure. Now some Christians, this is what I don't want us to do. I don't want us to think that because I give God my time, I don't have to give God my talent. Because I give God my talent, I don't have to give God my treasure. Because really, God wants it all. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something else. I've never seen anybody go broke. I've never seen anybody get sick. I've never seen nobody lose their mind Amen. from doing all of the above simultaneously. Those people up there, they all give a guy their time because they were here Saturday for rehearsal. Watch this example. This is a living example right there. They gave God their time because they were all here Saturday for rehearsal, right? They gave God their talent because they're right here Sunday singing, right? Right? You got time, you got talent, and every one of them up, every one of them up there are tired. <laughs> time, talent, treasure. Time, talent, treasure. Some some of us feel like some of us feel like if I give God my time, I don't have to give God my talent. If I give God my talent, I don't have to give God my treasure. But what is a sacrifice? How much does a sacrifice cost? Every one of them has something they could have been doing on Saturday. They were here rehearsing. Am I right? Am I right about it? They got stuff they could be doing. I wonder what Barbara Russ would be doing on Saturday. <laughs> Miss Daisy, I call her Miss Daisy. But anyway, my goal today is to help you as members of the Christian community um, to, to challenge you with, um, with what a sacrifice is and, and what a sacrifice can do and, and what a sacrifice feels like. First of all, I want you to know that a sacrifice hurts. You can feel it, right, right, right. You can feel it. You can feel it. You can feel it. You can feel it. A sacrifice. You can feel it. Am I right about it? If you do something, if you do something, and they don't feel it, and it don't cost you nothing, it didn't, it didn't inconvenience you, you didn't, you didn't go out your way, you didn't go out your way. So even when you're going through, 
even when it hurts, even when your leg got pain, even when you get a double knee vectectomy, and you get a, you with me here? <laughs> you still got to pray. One day, one day I called in the hill, she was in the hospital. I said, hmm, the nurses tell me you running around that hospital like a chicken with his head. And a few seconds later, she sent me on a text, this lady running track. I mean, emotion, she sent me a motion chat. Oh, I need it. And this lady was running like this. I said, oh, really got jokes and, and uh, skills, bro. But my point is, you got to praise God even when you're going through. I'm going to play with you for now. Anybody can praise God when you hit the number. <laughs> How about praise the Lord? But can you can you can you can you praise God when you get a shut off? Can you praise God when they threaten to repossess something? It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. So in this particular passage of scripture, I see the command, I see the concern, I see the compliance, the character, and the conclusion. Command, concern, compliance, character, and conclusion. I'm going to move fast. The command. On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, Go and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. Now, here's what it was. Israelites were messing up. God sent a plague on the Israelites. Israelites were dying by the thousand. David goes to God, asks God, What do I have to do to stop this plague? God sends Gad, a prophet, go to David and tell him to go up to Aruna's house and, and, and get the threshing floor from Aruna, the Jebusite. That's what verse 8 is about. Command, go up, build an altar upon the threshing floor of Aruna. Verse 19, we're still in the command. So David went up as the Lord commanded through God. Point number one, we've got to understand God's commands. When God gives you a command, don't worry about how popular it is, because most of God's plans are not going to be popular. Think about it. Most of the things that God tells you to do are not going to be very popular with your friends. When God tells you, look, I want you to stop drinking with them, look. your friends ain't going to get too popular. When God tells you, look, I want you to stop uh, hanging with them and doing what they're doing, that's not going to be very popular. You've got to do what God tells you to do, regardless of how your friends and your family or your foes feel about it. I got news for you. Even your foes don't want you to do what God does, because they don't want you to get right with God. So David went up as the Lord had commanded. Not only do we see the command, but let's take a look at the concern. When a ruler looked up and saw the king and his men coming toward him, he went out and bowed down before the king. Now listen here, you know what you need to know? You need to know this real good. David was a man of war. David was known for killing a lot of people. David was a warrior. He was a soldier. He was a man after God's own heart. But he was kidding. Amen. And he might take you out. Oh, don't let nobody to me. <laughs> Ask Brother Uriah. Yeah. Bathsheba's name was Bathsheba Uriah. And she was married to Uriah. Y'all with me here? Yeah. David saw her bathing on the thing on the roof one time. But he was supposed to be at work. War. He was supposed to be at war. This was the time of war. This was the time when the kings were supposed to be at the war. David ran back, see that she over there hey, and he sends for her. And she's married to Uriah, who is a soldier at war. David has uh, Bathsheba come to his house. David has relations with her. And a child is conceived in that. Women, my point is, David was not always the guy you wanted to see riding up to your house full of chariots and horses and gangs. 
So Uriah, I mean Aruna, 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 the Jebusite in our scripture, he says, oh my God, this man David comes, a man of war. So he runs out and he bows down before David and, and gives obeisance to him. The eye that word. That's a two dollar word for his chest. Ask to read the frame. Obesity. Oh, and we said that before, so go ahead. So here's what he does. So he bows down and he says, look here. Uh, hey, what up? Why are you here? What I do? What's getting ready to happen? As any of you should do when a guy like David shows up. So we're here, and this person here, it says, Aruna said to David, watch this, no, no, no. No, Aruna, why? in verse 21, why has my lord the king come to his service? David said, to buy your threshing floor. I'm still in verse 21. Am I in verse 21 so far? Yes. So I can build an offer to the Lord that the plague on the people be stopped. Now, there's something I call the Aruna spirit. The Aruna spirit is the spirit, my sister, my sister, my brother, that your brother had last week. The Aruna spirit is I see you getting ready to do something for the Lord. Put me down. Amen. David said, I'm here to buy the refreshing floor because I'm going to build an altar for the Lord. I'm going to say, build an altar for the Lord? Put me down with that. You with me here? He makes a sacrifice. He decides to volunteer, offer up, give up what David came to purchase. Amen. Oh, y'all going to love me after a while. I'm going to tell you what God did here. So Runa says, um, I'll tell you another thing we experienced. We experienced in this room, seven days ago, a room full of Runa. Amen.
Take my eyes. Burn them up for the burn for the burn up. Take my tools and all the wood for the threshing floor. The threshing floor was where they where they grind the grain. They grind the grain. There was two stones, a big stone round, and then there's another stone that rolls over the grain and crushes the grain. That's a threshing floor. It might be maybe about about big this room. Big giant stone. Okay? The threshing floor. That's, that's where the threshing floor is. You understand? It, it crushes the grain. So my brother said, take all the oxen and pull the pull the big stone, you know, stone over there. Well, you got oxen to pull it around, right? So so Ruta said, use them for the meat. And all this uh, all this uh, wood and stuff is connected to the harness, to the this, to the that, to connect to the stone. Take that and use that for the wood to burn the fire to to get to, 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 to cook the uh, the meat. That what I mean? Yes. So a pretty much said, Elva, oh, by the way. Keep the pressing floor too. Now let me tell you what's so special about this pressing floor. A. David, I'm sorry, Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, his son, on that very spot. Wow. <laughs> Number one. Number two, later David comes back after this story. Not only does he buy the threshing floor from Aruna, but he buys the land that is around the threshing floor. With this threshing floor, he only paid 50 pieces of silver. But when he came back and bought the land, he, he bought, bought it with gold. I think it was a few hundred pieces of gold to buy the land. Guess what was built on that spot? I am, I am listen to that. Listen to this. Abraham sacrificed, was ready to sacrifice his son Isaac to the threshing floor. David built an altar for the Lord on the threshing floor. Solomon built a temple over the threshing floor and the land of Adam. That's how significant this particular blessed parcel was worth. You with me here? So, so point being, this is a very significant piece of land that Arun, the Jebusite, the Israelite, the Jebusite offered to David, the Israelite, to build an altar for David's God. He ain't even his God. He's a Jebusite. But he realized that something getting ready to happen for the most high God. I might not serve him, but I heard about it. Just like, just like you got most of those, you got most of those stuff in your family. They might not serve him, but they heard about it. So, the compliance was let my Lord the King take whatever he pleases and may the Lord get out of your Watch this now. Here's how you can tell about this guy. Look at the latter part of verse 22. Look at the latter part of verse 22. It says, May the Lord thank you. See it? See it? See it? See it? See it? See it? May the Lord, your God, accept you. A ruler was a smart person. That's smart people in the Bible. They don't have to be saved to be smart. Remember that king back there when I was in a Nineveh? In Nineveh? The king in Nineveh who realized that, uh, that uh, his, his, his people were getting ready to be destroyed. And he said, Look here, I want everybody to sack off and ask. I don't want nobody eating no man, women, children, apples. Because he was smart. You don't have to be saved to be smart. Amen. You got atheists on your job, Muslims on your job, that's smart enough to know not to mess with you. Amen. Not to mess with you. Amen. Because they know that you serve the most high God. Amen. They might not serve. I bet you the kids on your block, the ones that's Muslim, I bet you they don't mess with you, do. You know why? Because even the devil knows. Am I right about it? Some of y'all work, how many of you work on the job with non-believers? Work on the job with non-believers on your job. Put your hand up. All y'all Everybody dancing together. <laughs> non-believers, right? But guess what? My wife, the only person on, on the whole company 
was able to work for home from home for two straight years. Two straight years. Two. They were out for three months, they had to go back. Some of them six months, they had to go back. Some of them eight or nine months. No one even for a year. She was out for two full years. Because they know who she served. You want to run the same, but he knew the most high God. And get out your way. Not only we see the compliance, but let's take a look at the character. When King, when the king, verse 24, look at verse 24, y'all. But the king replied to Arun, no, I insist on paying for it. Let that man have just for a minute. I insist on paying for it. That's me, really. Yes. The ruler said, take this, take that, take that, take that, take that, take that, take that. In other words, David, you ain't got to pay nothing. Your money's no good here. David said, yes, it is. My money's good here because I'm paying. I'm not letting you give me this here. I will not offer unto God a sacrifice that didn't cost me anything. Right. It's right here. Right here. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that were free. Don't forget, David gave God his talent, he gave him his treasures, and he gave God his time. And he still didn't think it was robbery to pay for something. We, we're on another level here, right? And we're on another level? We're going up now. We're not staying still. We're going up or not. We're going to increase our faith. We're going to increase our giving. We're going to increase our love. We're going to increase, going to increase how we treat each other. We're going to increase. We're going to, here's another thing I want us to do. I want us to increase our patience with one another. I don't understand how you mad with your sister. Okay. If the Holy Spirit be in you, and the Holy Spirit be in her, I ain't never seen the Holy Spirit arguing with itself. So one of y'all, <laughs> you got the Holy Ghost, right? Oh, yeah. You got the Holy Ghost. How y'all? How y'all fight? I ain't never seen. I ain't never seen God fighting. It's somebody who got the Holy Spirit. Or one of y'all not listening to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit didn't tell you to cuss your sister out. And the Holy Spirit didn't tell you to be cuss her back out. So one of y'all, not both of y'all, are not walking with God. You're still going to heaven. You're just going to be sitting in the cussing section. <laughs> Oh, y'all didn't know, y'all didn't know heaven had us, that's what's like, how, how the heck do you think you get in there? I'm not saying. Hey, 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 brother, uh, uh, hey, hey, brother, look here, if heaven had us, that's what's like, how in the heck do you think you get in there? And as soon as I said heck, man. <laughs> hey, gotta have a custom section. Because uh, I'm good, I ain't gonna be able to get in there. Where's the, where's the custom section? Oh, it's all filled up. It's filled up, it's filled up first. <laughs> the custom section, the custom section gonna be the first one filled up. Oh, y'all gonna be having a name. Hey, Christian, you name. What up? Then over there be Mother Giles. Over the other side be Mother Giles. Mother Teresa. Sister, Sister Jarvis over there. Ruth Jarvis. Mother Jarvis. Ain't gonna be but about five people. It ain't gonna be but about five people in the nine cousins. All the rest of us gonna be over here. Mother, 
Bueno, usted es que sí o no me lo Sí, no me lo digo. 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 Sí, no me But not too many more of y'all are going to be making it in, I'm telling you that right now. Then mama, you're going to be sitting right next to me. <laughs> don't be thinking, don't be thinking because I didn't call your name out. I know who the cusses is up there. Hey, you ain't working for the electric company all them years that ain't cussing like I'm sure some people got cussed real good. <laughs> so, so, so here's a, so here, so here's back to our scripture, uh, verse 24. But the king replied to Aruna, no, I insist on paying for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God that which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. So David would not allow himself to offer something to God that was free. Amen. So now say, when I come to church knowing this scripture, I can't wait to sacrifice. Amen. I got a feeling. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to sit God. I want to pay for the bill. You know what I'm saying? You know when you go out to, you know, you, you go out to dinner and you got a group. One person pick up the tab. Another person say, I got the tip. You know what I'm saying? I want to be the person when it comes to godly things. I want to be the person when it comes to godly things. Give me the tag. You follow what I'm saying? Don't you? And there's a lot of y'all in here to feel just like me. You don't want to tip God. You know what a tip to God is? When, when you made a thousand dollars and you come in and give God twenty five dollars, that's a tip. Because when a thousand dollars just the tithe, it's supposed to be a hundred dollars. Some people satisfied with tipping God, he'll take it. You're still getting in the heaven, yeah. but you're going to be sitting in that section out there. <laughs> 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 you're going to be the, the, the cussers and the tempers over there. <laughs> now in conclusion, verse 25, David built an altar to the Lord there, watch this, and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered the prayer on behalf of the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. Listen to me, sing. all because of a little sacrifice, thousands of people stopped dying. Because God saw that this little group right here, Aruna and David, was willing to make a sacrifice. And because of David's sacrifice and Aruna's willingness to sacrifice, the plague on the people was stopped. And just so you'll know, the plague, it was thousands of people dying during that plague. So every day that the plague went on, be another few hundred people. So in closing, I'd like to say that God sacrifice has always been God's way. You see, God always loved sacrifice. As a matter of fact, the law required that everything be cleansed by blood. That was with the law. And every, not, without the shedding of blood, could there be any forgiveness of sin. However, Christ came and satisfied that sacrifice. So that blood sacrifice thing, that's all over with, what paid for, paid in full. Brothers and sisters, men, women, and children, God does not want cheap sacrifice. Amen. That's it. You know what? I'm gonna close right here. I'm not gonna say another word. God does not want, nor does he not, cheap sacrifice. So the title of this sermon is, how much should a sacrifice cost? You answer that for yourself. God bless you.